What's going on everybody? Hope you're all having a fantastic day today. Now today I had to go ahead and put this video together because I'm getting partially frustrated when it comes to DICE and how they're handling the game with the bugs and the glitches and also the overall performance of Battlefield 2042. They claim they care about the title. They claim they have tons of people working on it behind the scenes. I mean at least EA is claiming all of these you know, outrageous statements. Yet and still, all of the updates and all of the patches and all of the bugs and glitches that they are working on current date have nothing to do with some of the most game-breaking problems that we as the community put up with on a day-to-day -day basis. And this isn't anything new. This has been happening since the very first day Battlefield 2042 was released to the public. I was just hoping that over time, they will learn from their lessons and they would more than likely focus on the most crucial aspects of what will truly bring players back into the cycle of Battlefield 2042 over the very, 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 very tiny bugs that barely even happen in a day-to-day -day basis. Like I said, I'm going to show you guys a little list right here that Battlefield Bulletin just posted up of the things that DICE is currently looking into for the future updates. And just very quickly before we go ahead and cover all of the topics here, I do want to make it very clear to each and every one of you guys that I do understand that DICE has done a tremendous job with going ahead and, you know, putting this game in a much better place than it was day one. Basically, where the game is at right now is exactly how it should have launched day one and then start working on some of the bugs and the glitches. But, of course, you know, it took a little bit more time, but I do want to recognize the work that DICE did put towards this game. I'm not saying that they completely abandoned it and they haven't done anything since day one, but I'm saying that we're at a point now where they have fixed the mass majority of the horrible game breaking bugs that you know just fundamentally going into the experience made the whole game horrible they fixed that stuff now it's time to focus on what will truly bring people back into the experience but like i said it seems like their priorities are all messed up right now so this is basically what the DICE team is looking at right now. Some users have reported a bug where the numbers of players in a team is above the threshold allowed. This will be fixed in an upcoming patch. A very rare bug where the LCMG shoots nades as normal bullets without doing any damage, no ADS. This actually is kind of funny. Can you imagine picking up this LCMG and just spraying out grenades out of this weapon now? <laughs> Luckily, it's not going to kill anybody, but I still think it's a pretty funny image to have in your head. Uh, Exodus Conquest and Exposure BT 24-7 playlist tutorials are mixed up. Exodus Conquest is showing up the wrong numbers of aircrafts available on Cast and border a rare bug where sometimes the new stealth helicopters are unable to destroy each other <laughs> Oh boy. Dice is aware that the helicopter control assist is not turning off. It keeps auto-correcting roll and pitch. A rare glitch where players get stuck inside the offshore platform break away after spawning on the top. Some players are unable to complete play a round of rush weekly mission after repeated attempts. Make sure to play the official 2042 infantry rush experience on Portal. If the issue persists, try to join a friend from a different region and wait until the match is over. So I guess that's pretty good information if anybody's running into that problem with the battle pass progression. Uh, additional note, the zero hour badge is tracking stats on the back end. Once the bug is fixed, players should receive all the remaining points that are on it. All right, so this is basically what DICE is currently looking on when it comes to Battlefield 2042. And if you're expecting anything different or anything more massive, then don't. Because every other bug, every other glitch, every other addition that they're going to have into this game is going to look exactly, exactly like this post right here. Now, later on in this season, around August, I believe, is when they said it's going to be coming out. They are going to be reworking Kaleidoscope, so that's going to be a good addition into the game. But there's no massive updates planned when it comes to the whole overview of what this season has to offer to us. Basically, like I said, every single update that's going to be coming into this game is going to be very minor changes that you see exactly on this page. And to me personally, this is very disappointing because this isn't going to improve anything when it comes to Battlefield 2042. Yes, there will be players that return to play Kaleidoscope. Honestly, not as many as the new map here. I think a lot of the, you know, the uh, seasoned players of Battlefield 2042 will gladly return, especially the ones that are trying to take a little bit of a break because, you know, they probably want to see how Kaleidoscope is. But anybody who's already played Kaleidoscope in the past and they just don't enjoy the game as it is, they're they're not going to return for that, right? They'll probably just watch YouTube content. They'll probably watch a Twitch stream. They'll probably just watch some gameplay of some sort and see what's happening with Kaleidoscope. It's not enough to bring people back into the action. And I want to make it very clear here that they don't have to go ahead and add content in order to make this game, you know, improve anymore. Because I understand that content is kind of out of DICE's hands. That's all revolving around EA. They have full control over what type of content, how much content is introduced into each season of Battlefield 2042. DICE doesn't really have a say within that. But they don't really have to add content in order to get people to come back to your game. What about just the horrible hit detection of this title? You know, PC has gotten a little bit better over time. But consoles have been absolutely struggling, not only with the aim assist, but just the app absolute 
hit detection of the players. Bullets do not register onto the enemies. And it's something that's been constantly happening for ages now, since the beginning of the game. And it's really sad as well, because last gen has been hit the hardest. And I knew this was going to happen. They do this every single time to last gen. Just don't make it for last gen if you're going to make the game absolutely garbage. They did this with, uh, which game was it again? It was Black Ops 3. Black Ops 3 and also Ghost. Ghost was a, um, it was, it was interesting. I think it was a little bit better than Black Ops 3 when it came to, you know, trying to make the game for last gen, next gen, and for PC. But Black Ops 3 was truly a horrifying game. And it's doing the same exact thing as Battlefield 2042. They make the worst port because they don't want to put as much effort into last gen, obviously. They want to put all their effort into next gen and also PC and stuff like that. They don't care about last gen, which sucks because if that's the case, don't make it. Just simply don't make it for last gen. If you release it for that platform, it should play just as good, if not better, than all the other platforms. I mean, just the fact alone that I cannot play with last gen players on, you know, 64 player conquest says enough that they 110% did not put enough effort into that game to make sure that it could be up to par with everybody else. It's really, really, really sad because there's so many players that I know that are on last gen that I could totally play with, squad up with, and people who hop into my stream because... For those who don't know, on my live streams that I pretty much stream every single day, uh, we have open lobbies. Everybody's welcome. Anybody can add me. And a lot of people in last gen don't get the opportunity to do so. And the crazy thing is that we're always playing 64 player conquest. We're always playing breakthrough, you know, game modes that were made originally on last gen for that player count. And I can't play with them. For what reason? because they didn't optimize it correctly. And players are still struggling with this hit detection until current date, and it's not even on their minds right now. It was a big topic in the very beginning. Don't get me wrong, DICE addressed it a ton, but they only did minor work to it and then completely ditched it. And it's not just last gen, it's PC still as well. It's next gen still as well. I've showed you guys multiple different examples weekly of horrifying hit detection. I mean, just tune into my stream and I guarantee two games, three games maybe out of my play sessions, I will get into live lobbies where random people I will dump a full mag and you will see with your own eyes a full mag directly on red dot on the person and it's not far range it's not like you know I'm really far and I need to lead the bullets no I'm talking about point blank range seeing actual blood come from the enemies and no hit markers no hit detection no damage you know that is one of the most crucial things for any video game to make sure the weapons work FPS games, I should be a little bit more specific. It's very crucial for FPS games. You know, these games revolve around shooting the opponent. So when the shooting part doesn't work, what makes you think people are going to come and play your game? That should literally, in my personal opinion, be priority number one, especially for last-gen consoles as well. But we never see any talk of this. They mentioned it a couple of times in the very beginning because everybody was complaining about it. But now that the problem is partially resolved for, you know, PC, they don't really care anymore. You know, next-gen consoles are still struggling on controller. And last gen is absolutely getting obliterated, but they don't care anymore because, you know, the work that they did, I guess, is good enough. And you want to know what's even crazier? After eight plus months of them having to deal with this horrifying hit detection, and even though, like I said, they patched up a little bit, it's not completely perfect, but alongside with the hit detection not being completely polished off, the connections to these lobbies are still completely wonky because of a lack of a server browser. Everybody always tells me to go to Portal to get an experience like that, but I can't even find Portal lobbies that give me a good connection. It's only about a couple of servers in there that are like 20 to 30 ping that are barely ever full, and the rest of them are 100 plus ping lobbies, mostly just survival servers. I just want to play simply the all out warfare playlist. Give me the conquest, give me the breakthrough, give me official EA servers that I personally can choose from. One of the main reasons why I always preferred the matchmaking in Battlefield over Call of Duty in the past is because of that exact reason. Compared to Call of Duty where nowadays the skill based matchmaking is so thick that it actually chooses competition over connection, it puts you in high ping lobbies 24-7. But when it came to playing games like Battlefield 5, Battlefield 1, Battlefield 3, Battlefield 4, shoot, even Battlefield Hardline, every single lobby that I joined in, I could specifically pick the right connection. And in a game like Battlefield 2042 where the hit detection is already as bad as it is, the aim assist is still completely off, and the guns just feel still slightly wonky, connection is is absolute king. Connection has always been king, don't get me wrong. In every single game that I could possibly think of, not even FPS games, it could be fighting games, whatever you want to play, 
FPS is going to dominate. Whoever has the best connection in the lobby is more than likely going to have some type of advantage. But when it comes to a game like this, where the hit detection is very bad, and the gunplay, especially in an FPS game, the most crucial aspect, the guns, the weapons, how they feel, when that is completely off, the least that you could do for the community is allow us to get into the best possible connection server. So at least we can know that it's not going to be lag on top of the bad hit detection, you know what I'm saying? But instead of going ahead and talking about this and discussing these problems, they go ahead and start discussing more rare things that happen within the Battlefield 2042 experience. Things that I personally haven't even witnessed. I've never gotten into a gunfight with the stealth choppers and I haven't done any damage. I've never gotten to a situation where my LCMG is shooting, you know, frag grenade. I've never gotten to any of those problems in that list. I'm sure some of you guys have. But again, they are rare issues compared to these bigger problems that I'm mentioning here that would actually bring people back. If someone saw that a server browser was coming into Battlefield 2042, more than likely that individual good 20 2042 another shot. If someone saw that the weapons were getting completely reworked from the ground up to make sure that they actually work properly instead of being absolutely just complete utter messes, people would actually probably re-enter Battlefield 2042. But seeing that the stealth choppers are finally going to be able to fight each other now is just going to be something that someone's going to laugh about. I mean, that's what I did, right? I didn't really take this seriously. I chuckled at it. I'm like, <laughs> geez, that image is actually pretty funny. Just seeing two stealth choppers sitting there beefing with one another, not doing anything. Or the LCMG with frags. It's like, these things aren't legitimate problems that will bring people back into the experience. I mean, even people are complaining about the wait times to get into lobbies. I completely agree with it. This is all over Reddit. People are constantly, constantly getting pissed off with the wait times to get into lobbies, to get back out of lobbies, and then to re-enter back into lobbies. And on top of not having a server browser, sometimes it just puts you into games that are completely finished and since you know you're not going to recycle back into the same lobby since you know if you're in a server browser you're in an official server no you're just in a quick playlist when you're in that situation it will put you in a game that's almost done and then boot you out and then put you in the same cycle to have to find another new brand new game that could potentially do the same thing to you and put you in a game that's almost done it's horrifying the whole thing is horrifying here and what sucks is that dice already came out and said that they don't even think they're going to go ahead and put in the portal server browser into all-out warfare they have no plans of doing it right now this type of feedback is not what you want to go ahead and give to your community. Again, I'm grateful for all the bug fixes, but let's be honest here. The game is at a more playable spot now. This is fantastic. You know, it came a long way, definitely. From day one to now, it has come a very long way. But now we have to actually populate the game and add in features that will make the Battlefield experience 10 times better because there's so much only in battlefield moments and just battlefield vibes missing out of this game and even though yes on the very rare occasion you can get those moments and those vibes but i want it consistently i can hop on battlefield 4 and play for hours and every single game is just jam-packed with moments that i absolutely adore and love no boring moments no down times and no just a lack of entertainment because of you know like i said hit detection aim assist for controller players, lobby times to get into games without a server browser makes up for, you know, just constantly joining into matches that are already in progress. It, it sucks. It absolutely bad connection all the time. It's like all of these things could be easily resolved if you drop the ego and just added in the things that the community has been begging for since day one. All of it could be resolved, and you would actually have a better player count. Maybe not better than, you know, some of the past Battlefield games, but it will definitely be better than what it is current date. But ladies and gentlemen, thank you all so much for checking out this video. If you enjoyed it, make sure to leave a like button and hit it. Leave a dislike. Also, if you're brand new and enjoy the content, don't forget to subscribe and hit that notification button. Also, if you want to chat me, there's two ways to do so. I have a Twitter and Discord, both linked down in the description. And also, if you want to catch me live streams of video games, do it on Twitch. Link that is in the description as well. But guys, thanks so much for tuning in. See you on the next one. Peace out.